So this is the men's individual Sabre semi-final. The reigning Olympic champion, Aaron Zhilagi of Hungary, will take on Kim Jungwan of Korea. So representing Hungary, Aaron Zhilagi, he is the reigning Olympic champion. He won a bronze at uh, the World Championships in his home of Budapest back in 2013. And that was his progression through to this semi-final. And from Korea, the very exciting and explosive and interesting to watch uh, Sabre Sabrua, uh, Kim Hyung-wong from Korea. This was his progression through, knocked out Nikolai Kovalev uh, in the quarter final. So Sabre is uh, unusual in that it's the only cutting weapon of the three uh, fencing swords. You can hit with the side of the blade as well as the uh, point. And uh, it's again up to the referee to decide who the attacking fencer is, who has the last right of way in the final action. So if you're being attacked, you have two good options. That's a run away and make your opponent miss or use your blade to block. And if you do either of those two things, then it's your turn to attack. A bit of a game of turns, really. But, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. It's Sabre time. Zhilagi on the left of your screen and Kim on the right and bang, they're already straight at it. Simultaneous that attack. We will see a lot of simultaneous attacks. That time there's blade contact. Zhilagi comes through with the point. Yes, this is fast. This is furious. This is Sabre. These two have met five times in this Olympic cycle. Zhilagi won 15-11 in 2013 at the Padua World Cup. Uh, Zhilagi won again uh, at the Budapest World Cup Grand Prix uh, in, sorry, Kim won at the Budapest Grand Prix in 2014. Zhilagi got him back at the Athens World Cup 15-8 in 2014. But more recently, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Kim won in the New York uh, Grand Prix in 2014. And Zhilagi won at the Moscow Grand Prix last year. So really very little between these two. Zhilagi with the early lead, 3-0 for the Hungarian. Kim coming forward. Now it looked like a, it was a, a parry from Zhilagi. It was Kim's attack. Zhilagi parried his attack and then hit him with the riposte. There's the parry and there's the riposte. There we go. Great slow motion replays. You can really pick out the blades with these superb lights here in the Carioca 3 arena. And Zhilagi's 4-0 up. Difficult to separate that one. The referee's just saying you both started at the same time. We go again. That was Zhilagi's. 5-0 up. Zhilagi's running away with this. The reigning Olympic champion. Yeah, he's got great timing, wonderful rhythm and movement, classic Hungarian technique, and pulls out some unbelievable para repos. Not that time, because uh, a passionate, athletic, 100% committed Kim Jung Wan is also brilliant on his feet, has brilliant timing, and he's so, so fast. And in the last three years, has had a great improvement in his technique. Well, Zhilagi slipped, his front foot slipped away on that point, and that sent him down, and really was one of the reasons why he was hit in that encounter. Couldn't defend himself, he was sliding.
Great shot of the guard in Sabre. And that's another point to Zhilagi. Yeah, I think it was contested though by Kim. I think uh, the Very video's been to sent. To who started that one first? Yeah, and the referee's got to decide whether um, it was uh, Kim who finished his attack. If you look halfway through the attack on that replay, it looks like he stops and then starts again. His arm doesn't come backwards, but it does stop moving forwards. That's crucial. Sticks with the same decision. So started, stop. You can see Papatori started, started again. Oh, and Zhilagi looking for setting up that distance trap, steps in, draws the attack, looks for a parry or a pass. And like I said, he's not scared to go for a bit of a risk, especially in the early stages. See, he looks for the parry or a pass and uh, unfortunately for him, Kim was already through. So didn't land the parry. That time there. At the same time. Yeah, called together. Oh, beautiful attack. Kim took a couple of exploratory steps forwards, just had a look to see what Zhilagi was doing, and then just exploded on top of him. Unbelievable. And caught him on the wrist there. Zhilagi unable to use his guard to block out Kim's blade. That time it's Zhilagi. Now you might recognize that young man. That is Andras Deshi, brother of Tomash, who was fencing here today. And uh, Deshi, uh, sorry, Zilagi switched from uh, uh, his previous coach, uh, Somlai, less than a year ago. So Zilagi asking, the little box sign is asking for a video uh, replay, a video appeal. The fences have are allowed two unsuccessful appeals before they are they run out. So that is Zhilagi using up one of those. Yeah. Referee stuck with his decision. So 7-4. There is no clock in Sabre. It's all done so fast that there's no need to time the bout. It'll be over quick enough. Uh, when we get to eight, when the first fencing to get to eight, we have a break. And that is the case right now. So we're into the minute break. A brilliant, brilliant late power post here from Zhilagi. Makes it look simple, but let me tell you, that is a superbly impressive power post to finish things off. And he is looking very, very dominant here. Uh, the energetic exciting electric Kim has been subdued in this first period and uh, that's all down to the skill of Aaron Zhilagi. So what can Kim do? First off, he needs to make sure he doesn't throw water all over his face. Um, but uh, what he can do here is he, he has to he has to open the distance up a little bit, I think. Uh, and to be honest with you, Zalagi's taken more risks than him, and it's paid off for Zalagi. So Kim perhaps needs to be a little bit more conservative in his approach. And taking those two steps forwards at the beginning of each action, he needs to be very, very sure about what he's doing at least halfway through those two steps. And perhaps he actually needs to look for Zilagi to come onto him a little bit and pick up parry posts. Not necessarily his style. He likes to be the attacker, but it's not working here. No separation there. Simultaneous attack. So... Zhilagi was hit on preparation. Yeah, slightest hesitation. There is talk about experimenting with changing the uh, 
position that the fencers will come on guard in Sabre. They are going to do it after this Olympic Games. They're going to move them so their back foot are on uh, the on-guard lines. They're virtually touching each other. In order to stop this, um, too many uh, simultaneous attacks where there's no separation between who starts their attack first. Yeah, who initiates. Not sure, I'm not sure if it will, but we'll see. They've done some tests. They're confident it will. A point to Zulagi. Yeah, Kim acknowledging that one. He thought he'd pick things up, but if you watch here, the blade goes into the bottom third of Zulagi's guard, of Zulagi's uh, weapon, and that means it's a parry or a pass by default. Oh, just superb. Changing from a cutting action to a point action there, extending the reach. Which he lands with that point as he comes forwards. Very, very good stuff from Zilagi. Great variety. But Kim still leaning forwards, looking to come out of the blocks fast. For me, this is not working for him at the moment. He does get that attack. Zilagi calls for a video replay. Or if you're new to fencing, there's a lot of people who will ask, why do they have this right-of-way system? And I like to say, well, it's like, why have an offside system in, in football? If you don't have the offside rule, then you just have, like, big, tall attackers just hanging around the goalkeeper the whole time. And the right-of-way encourages proper fencing. Yeah, fencing etiquette, it's my turn then your turn my turn then your turn then you, you you have to uh, you have to strike when you have the initiative preparation attack from Zilagi a slightest hesitation there and for, for the uninitiated you're thinking well, wow how does the referee call that but when you see it in slow motion you see that step forward the arm comes out from Kim and then it just comes back very slightly and that's opening the door for Zilagi's attack Another video appeal by the looks of things. Can't see this one being turned over. Same decision on the MEM shows. So Kim's got a bit of work to do. 11-6. Right on the back line. Zulagi pushed back. Kim's not out of it yet. Oh, a bit more patience on the attack. That lovely hop that you see from Kim uh, just before he starts his attack. Well, it gives him a bit of a spring and momentum to start the acceleration of his attack. Kim's flunge attack. So just explain the, the difference between a flesh and a flunge. Well, a flesh is a running attack where you bring your back foot over your front foot. You cross over your feet. That's not allowed in Sabre, so they've developed a, a, a special flesh, which is a combination between a flesh and a lunge, where your back foot stays behind you and you fly through the air. Now Kim's starting to get back into it. He maybe has the initiative now. Yeah, just stuttering on his attack a little bit, waiting for Zilagi to make a mistake, waiting for Zilagi to counter-attack that time and landing his attack. Needs to be so stuttering, stuttering on your attack and stopping your attack. Yeah, I mean, it's a fine line. You're... You're maintaining the momentum going forward, but you're changing the speed that you do it. So you go fast, fast step, slow step, fast, fast step, and then another slow step, and then you finish. And you're trying to draw your opponent out in those slow steps to make a counter-attack and then finish your attack quickly. Your opponent mustn't fall into that trap. Josh Deshi, nice cold. Preparation again from the Korean.
So fractions of a second decide who starts the attack first. This is good for Kim though. And he gets the attack again. Those attacks are working for him well. Well, when he can get Zhilagi moving back, then Kim's able to finish with this long, stuttering, as you say, attack. Yeah. He's giving that to Kim as well. He's now back within three. Definitely not out of this. I tell you, if he gets back into this fight, gets on level terms, we're going to see him running around the field of play as we did a little bit earlier on today as he was going through the field. So 13-10, they're going to 15. That one is deemed to be simultaneous. Yeah, unable to separate those attacks. Both thought it was theirs. Well, he's given that one to Zhilagi. No, he's given no. it to Kim. He's given it to Kim. He said that Zhilagi was counter-attacking. <laughs> Who'd be a referee? How on earth do you separate those? They look so close together, and I think Zhilagi has called for a video. Well, that was a big call from Papatore to bring the scores to 13-11. Just two in it. The reigning Olympic champion, Aaron Jalagi, comes in, attack fails. Now it's Kim's turn to attack. Pushes Jalagi oh. right to the back line and scores. Oh, unbelievable. Jalagi had the right of way there, but Kim is so fast on this continuation that Zalagi was hit before he knew it. Hadn't had a chance to reset for his power post, and usually he's so good in defence. Well, watch this, there's the parry, but Zalagi's momentum's taking him backwards, and he just cannot get the riposte out. Fantastic stuff from Kim. So Zalagi did all the hard work, he actually parried Kim's blade, but couldn't land his riposte in time. And Kim picked the initiative back up and brings the scores to within one. That time Kim comes flying in, and Zhilagi able to land the parry repost. You could hear the clack clack of blade contact, and then contact with Zhilagi's blade to the mass of Kim. Yeah, and uh, Kim really did have the momentum there, but uh, Zhilagi stole it back off him. Quick as a flash, and That's now... That's it, it's over! He's done it. It took him a while to get over the line, but he has done it. Aaron Jalagi, the reigning Olympic champion, now has a chance to fight, to defend his gold medal. And he is guaranteed either silver or gold uh, later on this evening. And Kim Hyung Wan, the 32-year-old Korean, well, he'll have to go into the bronze medal match off so confirmation the winner Aaron Zhilagi and there we go confirmation of the semi-final result Aaron Zhilagi he had that early lead in that first period leading that 8-4 in fact Kim outscored him in the, the second period but Zhilagi doing enough to maintain his lead all the way through. And he outfenced Kim, I think. Kim was more athletic, but I think Zhilagi perhaps had the, the, the better tactics. Yeah, better tactics, better technique. And uh, those power posts are uh, sublime. And uh, he's looking pretty happy with himself, and so he should. But uh, I think... Uh, as we look forward to the second semi-final, where well, we've got number two and three in the world in the first semi-final, and then we have uh, lower-ranked fencers uh, in the second one, number 10 in the world in Daryl Homer, number 15 in Mujtaba Abedini, and I believe that uh, 
Mushtaba Abedini is the first Iranian to make it to a semi-final of an Olympic fencing event.